Hello gorgeous ladies. I hope that you're having such a beautiful day so far. Haley and Morgan here. I wanted to share with you ladies what kills a man's desire to provide for you. This is the number one thing that I see with the women that I work with. I just noticed my nail fell off. Um, <laughs> this is the number one thing I end up working on with women. The number one thing that kills his his instinct to take care of you, to provide for you financially, provide for you emotionally, provide for you physically, provide for you spiritually, all the different ways that men love to provide for women. And Maya's going to be over here. I'm going to have to move her. Let's She loves to rub against the microphone, so I just noticed you can see the reflection in my picture over there. Oh well. So my program, Calling Your King Provider, is really the full sort of step-by-step -step of how to inspire a man to provide for you. And one of the gorgeous ladies in there posted in our private support group um, a screenshot of something she saw on Facebook where a woman was um, sharing that her boyfriend had had a nightmare and she comforted him after he expressed he had this nightmare and she was rubbing his head and rubbing his back and she just felt so connected with him, like she has a best friend for the rest of her life. And um, this lady in the program, this beautiful woman, was asking, is this okay? Is this genuine connection, like building intimacy with a man? Or is this the thing that I talk about in Calling Your King Provider, which kills provider instinct in men? And... This is called mothering. Mothering a man is the number one thing that kills his instinct to take care of you. Mothering, nurturing a man like you would a child or a good girlfriend or a family member, like someone you really care about, puts a man into, it polarizes him into being like a child with you. And it sounds so sweet, right? Like, I'm going to reach over and rub his back, and I'm going to reach over and scratch his head, or I'm going to ask him if he needs anything. I'm going to um, think about him and do thoughtful things for him. And basically, a lot of women will treat men the way that they wish they could be treated, to be kind of spoiled in a way, to be you know, loved on physically, to be, to have someone like think about you and, and buy you thoughtful presents and consider your needs and give you comfort when you need some comfort. It makes a lot of sense that we would give the love that we want to get ourselves with a man, but it doesn't work well. And I work with a lot of women privately where they start out like that. They started out like being really thoughtful and wanting to take care of their man so that he will take care of her in return. And what happens, the reason why this doesn't work is, one, if you treat a man like a child, he acts like a child with you. He starts to expect you to be the mom. And something we talk about in the program, and I'm not going to go too deep in here because if you want, if you want to know everything, I really would suggest buying, calling your king provider, making the investment. Um, once we wrap up in two weeks, you can buy the program and go through it on your own time. So it won't be live but you can still go through all of the recordings and all of the bonuses in there. You still get access to the private Facebook group. But something I talk about inside Calling Your King Provider 
is the energy bubble. Okay, the energy bubble is when I lean in, it pushes him away from me. And when we're doing thoughtful things like stroking a man's hair, I feel like I have lipstick on my teeth, stroking a man's hair, scratching his back, anything without him directly asking you to do it, and you're just being thoughtful, buying him things randomly, um, basically going out of your way to do stuff for him. Men don't understand women doing things that they don't want to do. They really, they don't understand it. They, they can't, they can't conceptualize a woman doing things that she wouldn't want to do. Although women understand we do stuff we don't want to do all the time. Men only do stuff that they want to do. So, and this kind of plays on two different things. Like, he's only going to do things for you that he actually genuinely wants to do. So if he's not doing those things, it's because he doesn't want to do those things for you. But also, it kind of puts you in this position, in this role, where he assumes you really enjoy being the masculine. Like, you enjoy taking care of him, and you enjoy um, being the giver in the relationship. Like, he doesn't understand women building resentment. They don't understand why women become so irritated all the time. When you've been in that role for a while, and the energy bubbles pushed him into his girl energy, and he's on the receiving end, and you start becoming really angry after a while. This is what I have, this is what I see with a lot of my private clients. It's like, you know, I was so giving and so nurturing and so caring of him and he doesn't appreciate any of it. And he doesn't do the same thing for me. He's not thoughtful. He doesn't anticipate my needs like I do his. I always feel like I have to tell him exactly what to do for me. And it, it makes me so angry, right? It makes me so angry that he's not as thoughtful as I am. That he's not, like he doesn't have that instinct to take care of me in the way that I do for him. And women over a period of time, it's all sweet in the beginning. And then after six months, a year, two years, 10 years, you know, once you really get deep into that role, you become so resentful for your person because men don't operate the same way women do. They don't operate the same way that we do. They're not going to like think in their head, oh, she's doing all this for me because she wants me to do these things for her back. He's either being the man or he's being the girl. He's being the giver or he's being the receiver. I want you to think of that energy bubble. So yeah, it seems real sweet when we go into mothering and nurturing, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work if you are a woman whose feminine instincts are completely activated the feminine instinct is like i want to be completely cherished i want to be adored i want to be loved i want to be taken care of like i don't want to have to hustle for my entire life i don't want to have to give before i can get i mean a lot of us were programmed as little girls like I can't have what I want until I behave correctly or I do X, Y, Z to make my parents proud of me and then I'll get a little scraps of love, right? And so when you're doing the same thing in adulthood, you're like, I don't just get to just receive, like I, I just, I always have to work for it, like I always have to take care of everyone else, like your instinct to be taken care of will come online at some point in your life. I mean, for some women, um, it may be there, but it's, it's, it's buried real deep for them. And they're just angry all the time. You know exactly what kind of women I'm talking about. Women that are cranky, like chronically cranky, and they're not soft. And it's really not enjoyable to be around those types of women. But they're so wounded. They're so wounded with their receiving wound and feeling like they don't get to have anything unless they work really hard for it and they can have like a lot of scarcity mindset but I'm getting off topic here when your feminine instinct is online then you need to learn how to be a woman with a man how to stop giving and mothering him and controlling him mothering feels really good initially for women because it gives you a sense of power in the relationship. It gives you a sense of control. Okay, this is really deep stuff that I'm talking about. And I 
I have a very strong habit of mothering. And I talk about what to do with that energy inside calling your king provider, you know, how, where to put that energy. I have a lot of mothering energy. I have a lot of nurturing energy. It is so easy for me to just reach over and want to kiss my husband first and want to love on him first. And I know from experience, as soon as I do that, he starts acting like a little baby, okay? I have a story to tell you, ladies. Um, this picture right here, this it's a big framed wallpaper, and we moved my office. We made my office a guest room, and I wanted to put everything in our bedroom. And Chris was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and we were, we were installing this. Actually, Chris was installing it, and I just kind of let him do his thing. Well, this thing's really heavy. And I was watching Chris put this up and he was doing it in a very sketchy way and it fell on his toe, like fell on his toe and it's very, very heavy and the edge like sliced into his toe. And I felt so bad and I felt like I was responsible in some way because I asked him to move it. And so what did I do? I went into mothering. I was like, oh, honey, let me get you an ice pack. Let me, here, come lay down on the couch. And what do you need right now? You you need some medicine here. Let me get you some Tylenol. I immediately went into mothering. And it sounds nice, right? Oh, well, that's just a normal thing to do. That's a nice person thing to do, right? Okay, well, here's what happened. My husband, and I love him. I love my husband. But all day, he acted like a little baby about this little cut in his toe. And, like, it wasn't a little cut. It was a deep, it was a pretty deep gash. But as soon as I started, like, anticipating his needs and mothering him and asking, like, what can I do for you? What do you need right now? And just going into, like, overcompensating, basically. He was on the couch. He's like, oh, it hurts so much. It hurts so much. And at first it was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for you. And after a while, like after a couple hours of him being like, I can't feel my toe and like acting, acting like a child, basically, I was like, I'm starting to get really annoyed. Like I'm starting to get turned off by this because like, I've done this dynamic before with, with men where I, I'm, like, the mom in the relationship, basically. And I miss, like, Betty Homemaker. Like, I miss, I'm going to cook you dinner and I'm going to bring you a beer and I'm going to do all this stuff and anticipate your needs. And then they just feel, like, either they become childlike or they get really angry with you. So let me know if you've had that experience before where a man gets angry at you and you don't even know why. You're like, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Like, I'm being a good partner. I'm being a good wife. I'm being a good girlfriend, whatever it is. It's because men don't want to be babied. They don't really want to. Even if a man acts like he likes being nurtured and mothered, Initially, it, it's, 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 it's hitting his mother wound, right? Because he probably didn't get a whole lot of nurturing as a little boy. So it's, it feels good initially. And it feels good for you too because you probably didn't have a very strong masculine father who protected you and spoiled you a little bit, you know? And so you're kind of like hitting on each other's wounds. And, and it, it initially is like, ooh, this feels right. This feels good. But every man deep down inside and, and for some men, it's not that deep down inside. It's like right under the surface or, or it's completely conscious for him. They want to feel like a man. They want to feel like a man, especially with a woman that he loves. He doesn't want to feel like a child. He doesn't want to feel like a little baby. He doesn't want to feel like the girl. And so what happens, you know, initially this stuff feels good for him. Long term, he starts to miss something. I'm missing something in this relationship. Typically, the sex will stop. So I hear from most of my private clients, they just stop having sex. Um, because his attraction for you isn't there. You're his mommy. His attraction for you is not there. So mothering is telling him what to do. It's, it's directly telling him what to do. Especially if you have children, it's like, will you go do this? Will you go do that? Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's criticizing him. It's judging him. There's so many different ways we mother and we talk all about it inside calling your king provider. But you have to completely stop all those things because a man wants, he wants a woman who is a woman with him. He doesn't want someone who's helping build him up as a man. They don't need that. A man only steps into his leadership 
through his own leadership. He has to learn how to lead. He has to learn how to be a man. And you cannot, you, you're not going to help him become a man by you leading yourself. And I talk all about how you get, how you do this, how to be a woman around a guy, how to change the polarity of your relationship. If you notice you're a bit of a mother, you're a bit of a nurturer. I, I talk to women all the time. Sometimes even it's my friends, like I'll have friends and they're telling me about their relationship and I, and I know like I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's being his mom. This is not going to play out well for her. And they're always complaining, complaining, complaining. Like, yeah, he was looking at some other girl's Instagram the other day and I got so mad, but I'm going to bring him some soup tonight and we're going to watch a movie together and I'm going to help clean his house. And I'm like, it's just unfortunate to me. Like it's unfortunate that women don't know this stuff. And you know, me too. Like I did not know this stuff. I didn't know anything about it until I started investing in the knowing investing in my own education, investing in my own coaching certifications, and beginning to work one-on-one clients and noticing these patterns in other women. And how do we stop doing that? So the number one thing that kills a man's instinct to take care of you is to mother him. You have to be a girl. You have to be a woman with him if you feel that deep need to be cared for. You cannot give to get Okay, that's a strategy. When we're giving to someone in order to get back, that's that's a strategy. And it's not going to work. And in fact, it's kind of like manipulation. But it's all unconscious. So there's no judgment in any of this. I've done it. We've all done it. And all women are sort of taught to be masculine and to act like moms or to play the role of wife even when you're a girlfriend. So you have to full stop doing the behaviors of a mom for a guy. You have to learn how to be a woman, how to receive with him. And that's exactly what we talk about inside of calling your king provider. Because this is this is deep work, ladies. It is deep, deep work. These are deeply embedded unconscious habits that we have. So I really, really hope that this live has been helpful for you, that you learn something through it. If you want even more, then like I said, we're about to wrap up calling your king provider in two weeks. Um, today is May 7th. So in two weeks, we'll wrap it up and then you can purchase it after the fact and go through the replays on your own and all the content. You still get, still get access to the private Facebook group. I don't know if I'm going to run this again live um, because I hate marketing. So... <laughs> And that's really the only thing stopping me from running it again, but it's been so good. This round has been so, so good, so much better than the first round, although the first round was good. The coaching inside this program this time around is just so much more direct, so much more direct, um, and there's just so much to learn and I love seeing the women understanding things and like light bulbs going off for them and them shifting and changing how they're showing up with men and getting totally different responses with men. This is radical stuff. It is super radical stuff. It's all about authenticity. But most of us don't even know what it's like to be a woman anymore. Most of us don't even know what it's like to be a fully embodied feminine woman. You know, when I'm on these videos, I'm not in my girl energy. I'm in my boy energy. I'm, I'm in my masculine. I'm teaching. I'm instructing. I'm leading. So, you know, you don't even really get to watch me being a girl. My husband gets to watch me be a girl. And I know how to switch and be a girl with him. But I hope that this has been beneficial, beneficial for you. And the link will be below to join Calling Your King Provider once it's open and available to purchase later. And I'm sending you all so much love and support to being provided for, to being cherished and deeply loved. You deserve it. All right. Talk to you all later.